up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 honda ridgeline courtesy of sioka honda of hanover in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because of course honda's reputation for excellent reliability there is a new trim level for the 2024 ridgeline as well and all-wheel drive actually does come standard on the ridgeline which is definitely useful in days like today where it is freezing and pouring down rain so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 ridgeline first one being the sport starting at $39,750 rtl which is the one we are in today starting at $42,580 trail sport which is the new trim level for the 2024 ridgeline that starts at $44,980 and the black edition going for $46,350 but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the ridgeline is going to be the same Powering the Beast is a 3.5 liter direct injected V6, putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,700 RPM. That power being sent to all four wheels through a nine-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know, of course, we will be testing out here in a little bit, but zero to 60 time, approximately 6.2 seconds. That's plenty impressive on paper. Red line, 6,900 RPM with MPG numbers coming in at 18 in the city, 24 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the ridge line, I did want to mention to you guys the drive mode. So there's a little button right behind the shift buttons there. Drive modes will include normal snow, mud, and sand, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the traction control settings, and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first, and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, so I just put it in manual shift mode here. Just press the D slash S button again, and it is telling me what gear I am in up on the digital portion of the gauges in three, two, one, go. This thing's quick. All right, so there is a, bit, a little bit of a delay to the paddle shifters, but that acceleration, I mean, that, that really impressed me there. Now, well, I'm mean, gonna give back full control to the ridge line here. We're gonna do that acceleration again because I was really just testing the paddle shifters out there, but again, there is a little bit of a delay, but the good thing about having paddle shifters in, let's say this truck as well as SUVs, is if it were to be snowing out here in PA, as it quite often does, if you're going down a hill, you can actually use the paddle shifters to do a little bit of engine braking, as opposed to actually hitting the brakes, you're less likely to actually slide off the road. So. They're good for that reason, but there is a little bit of a delay. But now let's go ahead and find one more straightaway and give back full control to the Ridgeline here. And let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Ridgeline here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, go. <laughs> I love how it's instantaneous. <laughs> That's fine. This thing is plenty quick. I already tested it out with the battle shifter, so definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. And I love how it's still a naturally aspirated V6. So it's not turbocharged yet like every other manufacturer is doing right now. Because not only does that impede uh, reliability a little bit, but you do have that little bit of a delay, a little bit of turbo lag when you initially hit the gas, which I've never been a big fan of. But I love the naturally aspirated engines because it's instant acceleration. Second you hit that accelerator, so I'm a big fan of the acceleration. So good job, Honda. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes that comes in at 128 feet which is pretty on par for the course as far as braking feel goes it's on the softer side of things as expected uh so usually with suvs and especially trucks you're not going to find a firm brake you feel so it's perfectly fine i don't have any issues with it is what i would expect there then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. But for that new trail sport trim level, there's actually an off-road tune suspension. So that is pretty darn cool. But anyways, as far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So absorbing Hanover's road imperfections quite nicely. It kind of rides like an SUV, quite honestly. So uh, think of the Honda Pilot. It's kind of what it rides like. So it's perfectly fine for me. As far as steering feel goes, 
I will say it's a little bit on the heavier side of things, but it's it's not a loose steering feel, which is typically what I expect in a vehicle that kind of rides like an SUV because most SUVs do have a loose steering feel. So I would say it's just right. It's not a heavy steering feel, but it's not a loose steering feel either. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 41 miles per hour right now. Get a little bit of a rain noise today, but honestly, there's not a heck of a lot of wind noise. There's not a lot of road noise either coming in. So that's been perfectly fine for me. Touching our rear visibility, it looks like a truck. Looking out my rear view mirror, I can see perfectly fine out the back, so definitely not gonna have any issues there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Honda Ridgeline. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Honda Ridgeline. And yes, I am under my umbrella, so a little bit of an ASMR in the rain here. But anyways, this one is finished in Sonic Gray Pearl, in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one. I like the color. There is a new color for the 2024 Ridgeline that's going to be called Diffused Sky Blue, and that is specific to the Trail Sport trim level only, in case you were curious. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number five, indicating that the Honda Ridgeline is built and assembled here in the US, in case you were curious. But starting up front, gloss black front grille will come standard. LED projector headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board. It's basically the best illumination you can get there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard, of course. You get the automatic feature. You also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So you gotta love that. LED fog lights, you guys can see those at the very bottom. They actually do come standard for every single trim level across the board. So I absolutely love that. In case you were curious about the ground clearance, it comes in at 7.6 inches there, in case you were curious about that. And you guys could probably see to the corners there, you will get front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the ridge line here, you're either going to find gloss black or chrome window surrounds, depending upon the trim level that you go with. Uh, when it comes to the side mirrors, they're gonna be body colored or gloss black side mirrors, again, depending upon the trim level there. Heated side mirrors come standard for all trim levels, but that sport trim. Power folding side mirrors then coming on the Trail Sport and Black Edition. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. I actually like these up close. And so 18 inch alloy wheels will come standard for all trim levels across the board. Of course, you will get some all-terrain tires for the Trail Sport. That's kind of the off-roading trim, of course, in case I didn't say that already. But additional underbody protection via skid plates also coming with that Trail Sport as well, in case you're curious. But again, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that center high mount stop lamp, you do have LED tail lights that come standard for every single trim level across the board. Gotta love that. I kind of like how that ridge line lettering is etched into the rear tailgate there. I think that looks pretty darn good as well. In case you're curious about the towing capacity since we're around back, that comes in at 5,000 pounds even. And then to the sides there, dual exhaust outlets. I love this look with chrome tips. Very few trucks are doing that. I think it looks absolutely amazing. But having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the ridge line, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, my favorite part about the ridge line, well, one of my favorite parts, it is a dual action tailgate, is what Honda calls it. So it does open up like a traditional tailgate in a truck from the top there, but it also swings open from right to left, kind of in the uh, passenger side rear tail, like close to that. So you lift up underneath and it kind of swings open. So if you wanted to put something back a little further into the tailgate, that's an easy way to go ahead and do that. But they also do that for another reason, cause there actually is in bed storage within the ridge line as well with a drain plug as well. So that is pretty darn cool. So you can actually go tailgating with the ridge line and put a bunch of ice and drinks back there kind of like the uh, Tesla Cybertruck now has. So the Honda Ridgeline actually pioneered this feature. They were the first ones to have it. So I absolutely love that. It is pretty darn cool. But anyways, as far as the bed length goes, that comes in at 64 inches uh, with the rear tailgate down that comes in at 83 inches in case you were curious. The embed storage that I was just telling you guys about, that's 7.3 cubic feet with the drain plug, of course. There is a spare tire 
spare within there as well, in case you were curious if it had a spare tire. That's where that's located. Uh, tie down cleats, of course, coming standard back there. You have some LED truck bed lights for the black edition trim level only, but that's how you get the LEDs at least. But truck bed power outlet then for that black edition as well. But soon then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 36.7 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. So much space I had in the back there. Cool thing about those rear seats though, of course, is a 60 40 split flip up bench seat. So if you had a Mastiff or a Great Dane or a heck of a lot of stuff you just wanted to put back there, you didn't need the seats, that's definitely an option back there. Rear ventilation and storage coming standard. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders as well. If you wanted heated rear seats, go with the black edition. That's how you're gonna go ahead and get that. And I was able to find the 12 volt power outlet back there too which is always nice, but then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the Sport, leather seating for the RTL trim level and up, L meaning leather, of course, tailway power driver seat with power lumbar for the RTL trim level and up as well, memory settings, RTL trim level and up, and that's for two different drivers, by the way, heated front seats for the RTL trim level and up. I think our trim level is really the sweet spot, quite honestly, but ventilated front seats then coming with the black edition in my short little test drive here today, seats have been plenty comfortable so absolutely no issues there. Then take a good look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping and is leather wrapped for the RTL trim level and up yet again. Heated steering wheel then coming with the Trail Sport and Black Edition in case you were curious and you wanted that. But let's go ahead and make our way to the startup now. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Honda logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that circular button that says hold, that is gonna be your remote start, which by the way comes standard on every single trim level across the board. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located kind of just to the left of the climate control information there. So once started up, as far as the gauges go, it's gonna be a seven inch digital screen. Tachometer is all the way to your left. Speedometer is on your right there and uh, digital speedometer front and center. Of course, it has how many miles you have left to hit empty. There's your outside temperature. Also displays all of the different drive modes up there as well. That's that noise that you guys are probably hearing there, but yeah, pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Power moonroof coming standard for every single trim level, but the Sport. LED interior lighting, all trims but the Sport again. So again, this RTL trim level is really the sweet spot, I'm telling you. Home light controls, yet again, all trim levels but the Sport. Overhead sunglass holder for all trim levels across the board. Tri-zone climate control actually comes standard for all trim levels as well. So both driver, passenger, and the rear passengers can all set their individual temperatures. This is pretty cool. Ambient LED lighting for the Trail Sport and Black Edition. If you go with the Trail Sport, the ambient lighting is gonna be finished in orange. If you go with the Black Edition, it's gonna be in red, in case you were curious. So it's not multicolor, it is a single color, but at least it's there. Wireless phone charger does come standard for every single trim level across the board. You gotta love that. That's located just in front of the shift buttons. It's got a rubberized bottom, so things don't slide around. But speaking of, just to the right of that, if you wanted more storage, there's more rubberized storage there. You got a couple USB charging ports, 12 volt power outlet, uh, dual cup holders, and surrounding those cup holders and shift buttons, it's actually a uh, texturized silver finish. Good job, Honda. You probably watched my videos before. I hate when manufacturers leave that a matte gray or a matte black plastic. Honda did better. They did it right. They gave it a texturized silver finish. So I definitely don't mind that. Then within the center armrest, there's an absolute ton of storage within that center armrest. So more than I'm used to finding, I'll definitely say that. So overall, as far as interior quality goes, it's not bad, kind of a little bit more towards the point, but there's a lot of storage, I'll say that, including on the doors. There's like three different levels of storage. I just saw that, so that's pretty cool. So. It wouldn't bother me. I'll just put it that way. But now let's go ahead and make our way to that infotainment screen. A nine inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard for all trim levels. You get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but you also get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but it's wireless for all trim levels. So no pesky USB cables, I love that. Factory navigation system for the Trail Sport and Black Edition. There's a ton of different things you can check out up there as well. So anyways, of course you got your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them actually. Seven speakers with 215 watts and a subwoofer coming with the Sport, RTL and Trail Sport. Then you got an eight speaker sound system with 540 watts and a subwoofer for the Black Edition. So. Having said that, we got that seven speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. 
Nowadays, everybody wanna talk like they got something to say, but if it comes out when they move they Act like it forgot about Dre, man. That was a pretty darn good sound system. Not, not a ton of clarity. It was pretty darn good. Don't get me wrong. But the bass was pretty darn good. You could definitely tell there was a subwoofer with that sound system, so... It's okay, it's not anything that's gonna blow you away, but it gets the job done. But last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the ridge line in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. There's a couple of different views down there in the bottom left hand corner as well, so that's pretty cool. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. Latch in the back, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, of course, Honda Sensing. So that gives you a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and you actually get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert for all trim levels across the board. So that is definitely pretty darn good as well. Then if you were to go with the Trail Sport or Black Edition, you're going to get front and rear parking sensors. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Ridgeline, the in-bed storage is still absolutely amazing. Most trucks are still not doing that. As amazing of a feature as it is, you would think more trucks would be doing that. But anyways, Tesla copied off of Honda on that one, so I like that. Dual action tailgate is pretty darn great as well. It's definitely more of a practical and convenient feature there. Also really liked the ride quality actually on the Ridgeline. It definitely rides more along the lines of an SUV like the Honda Pilot as opposed to an actual truck. So was a big fan of that. As far as uh, room for improvement goes, I'll give you two things, I guess. Um, towing capacity is just okay. 5,000 pounds, it's pretty much, uh, I'll, I'll say less than average for trucks. I'll just put it that way. And the other thing is the braking feel. Wouldn't mind it if that was firmed up a little bit. I know it's pretty much on par for the course. That 60 to zero and 128 feet, it's okay. It's just not the best. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Honda Ridgeline in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.